offered freedom today. Every sinner in the world is offered freedom today. I don't care who you are or where you live. There's freedom for you today. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Welcome to Camp Meeting 94. We invite you to join us for a great time of praise, ministry, and move of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Welcome to Camp Meeting 94. Freedom. Breaking the chains. I said freedom. You too can be free and live free. Welcome to Christian Center Cathedral of Praise. The seat broadcasting, the whole Summer All family. We welcome you in Jesus' name to another Power Pack Camp Meeting. Tonight our special guest is Billy Joe and Sharon Doherty. Tomorrow night will be John Hagee. Thursday night, Phil Pringle. Friday night, Clint and Sarah Utterbach. Saturday night, all the way from Uppsala, Sweden, Ulf Ekman, he'll be again Sunday morning. And once uh, all week, we've had the presence of the Holy Spirit. He is the really special guest in this place. With me is my beautiful wife, Kim. Welcome. Amen. It's so good to be here. How, how's camp meeting been for you so far? It's been a time of refreshing. God is just uh, refreshing us, and we're just soaking up the Word of God. Rod Carson has preached two dynamic messages, and um, I'm looking forward to Billy Joe and Sharon tonight. It's going to be wonderful. Amen. Uh, Pastor Rod preached this morning about communion, or about actually uh, discerning the Lord's body. And it was a powerful, powerful sermon. He tied it in with Revelation. This, this is a very important reason why you need to get the audio set. 13 cassette tapes for $100 has all the morning services and evening services on audio. They're a wonderful gift. There's so much Revelation knowledge that we can glean from that. For a love gift of $250, there are eight video tapes of all the evening services that would be just tremendous in your library. You just bring friends over to your house, sit them down and plug it in. Wonderful time of ministry. And then for a love gift of $1,000 or more, you can have the audio tapes, which will include the luncheons, Ellen Parsley's luncheon, Bob Harrison's breakfast, and, and the video cassettes, and they will be a blessing day after day after day. Kim, you know the anointing of God is so strong in this place right now. Yes, it is. You know, in Isaiah, the Bible says the anointing breaks the yoke. Or it actually says the anointing destroys the yoke. And so if you're at home, if you're within driving distance, or if you can get here tomorrow night, you need to be under this anointing. The anointing of God is so strong in this place. And the Bible says that you can be free because the anointing will destroy every yoke of bondage. So you need to come. Don't just sit home and watch by TV. Come and be a part of what God's doing here. It's, it's a Amen. strong corporate anointing here. Yes. Amen. I tell you, the Spirit of God is here in a powerful way. He's not only going to set you free, but He's going to give you the strength to stay free. And it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful life living as a child of God. And that's the way it was supposed to be. I'm, I just have faith to declare to you, this day you'll be free and you will not be entangled again in the bondages that have stopped you before. Because Jesus is fighting on your behalf. The blood is speaking out for you. The powerful Holy Ghost is working on your behalf. So, so from your home, join us from the camp meeting service right now as we go to the sanctuary. Lift your hands and let's worship the living God because He's so good to us. Let's go to the sanctuary. With
come into God's presence with thanksgiving and praise. The Bible says we'll enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And we have many reasons to rejoice in the God of our salvation. With me is our good friend, Mark Melvitt from Stanford, California. How are you doing, brother? Doing good. That's Stockton, California. It's great to be It's great to be in camp meeting. The Holy Ghost is so strong. And uh, those of you that are just sitting in your office, those of you pastors, you need the anointing of God in your church. You need to get out here to camp meeting. God's yeah. moving. Amen. It's, it's, a, it's a time of refreshing and a watering hole. I enjoy it because of the fellowship, being with the brethren, and I love meeting the other pastors. Uh, you know, it's a tool of the devil to make you feel isolated. Not just pastors, but believers. You can tell as a pastor when somebody's under attack because they start moving away from the flock. And as pastors, it's dangerous for it to happen. So we need you to come out. But the Spirit of God is doing wonderful things in the earth and particularly in the body of Christ. It's, it's, it's not so much we're dealing with sup, uh, superficial surface things. He's working, he's working deep in our hearts. What do you see him doing in California? Well, God's doing a great thing out there in California. You know, a lot of preachers told me when we started to work out there that it was a burnt barley field. Well, you know, when farmers burn their field, what happens? It causes nutrients to go back into the ground and they have a new harvest. And we're just seeing a tremendous uh, move of God's spirit over there uh, in California and all over America. God's moving by his spirit. Yeah. The, God's people, are, there's an earnestness in their heart. They're not seeking his hand anymore. They're seeking his face. Seeking his face. I, I think more than ever, we are coming to the realization that the end is near. Yes. And America needs a revival. America needs a revival desperately. But we, we, don't, we don't need another um, presentation of the gospel we need demonstration we need demonstration this is the generation of demonstration you know the bible says in the book of joel you know come to pass on the last day say i've got a part of my spirit about all flesh that black flesh white flesh green flesh whatever flesh male flesh female flesh whatever Amen. whoever is hungry for the move of god you're going to have it in your church and in your city so just keep on keeping on amen well that includes you and that includes me. So give us a call at the prayer line, and you participate in this service. Now, Craig, let's go over to you for a minute. All right, Scott, thank you very much. We are anticipating another great night of camp meeting here in South Bend, Indiana. And regardless of where you are tonight, we'd like for you to hook up and join us. If it's satellite, if it's one of the broadcast stations of LaCie Broadcasting around the country, if it's shortwave radio, wherever it happens to be, we would invite you to a very special evening during Freedom 94 and a very special camp meeting from Christian Center Cathedral of Praise here in South Bend, Indiana. Billy Joe and Sharon Doherty will be joining us in just minutes with their very special presentation from Christian Center tonight. Uh, pastor Doherty is the pastor of Victory Christian Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Many of you probably are a little bit aware of the Doherty's through their broadcast on the LaCie Network. They do a marvelous work there locally, and they've taken their ministry around the world and here to South Bend tonight. I want to remind you that coming up later on this week, John Hagee will be here. John Hagee from San Antonio, Texas. In fact, he'll be here tomorrow night to minister at Christian Center. On Thursday, it'll be Clinton and Sarah Utterbach coming in from New York, Nanuet, New York. On Friday, it's the uh, um, Phil Pringle. Actually, Phil Pringle Thursday and Friday, it's the Utterbach. Saturday, it will be off Ekman and off Ekman again on Sunday, and it helps to have something on the screen every once in a while for guys that have not so good memories like yours truly. So there's the lineup. It's going to be a special week of ministry during camp meeting. Again, we would invite you to be with us. Let's go back to the church and Scott Anderson. Scott, take it away. His grace now back. Love all 
The glory is coming down. It's filling this place. The tangible presence of the Holy Spirit is so evident here, and it's ministering healing and, and hope and so many wonderful things to God's people. And we're so glad you're a part of this broadcast with us. With me is our dear friend Mary Alice Islib, all the way from Minneapolis, Minnesota, pastor of Word of Life Church. Mary Alice, welcome to South Bend. Hi, Scott. It's good to be here and camp meeting and uh, experience the freedom and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can feel it in this place. Yeah. You can feel that God's going to do something very special tonight. So if you're watching with us, we're glad you're here. And you'll be ready for the Spirit of God to touch you and minister to you and bless you in a special way. And, you know, anytime God's people get together and pray and fast and cry out for God's presence, they will not be disappointed. People get disappointed when they cry out for the gifts and, the, and all these other things, but when you start crying out for God, you'll never be disappointed. And I just sense so much prayer has gone on preceding this meeting that, that people are being set free. I see the countenances of people changing, and there's a stack of prayer requests that have come in where people's lives have been changed by the power of prayer so camp meeting is a wonderful time to be refreshed to be supercharged but yet it all starts with prayer absolutely scott and when you talk about that what i think of is the bible verse in jeremiah 33 3 where the word says uh when you call unto god he answers you the amplified bible says he'll show you things you don't understand things that are hidden things that are fenced in so uh, people are crying out to god right now and we've cried out to god to touch us and reveal himself to us this week and uh, he's going to do that. And uh, anyone who calls upon his name, he's going to answer them and show them great and mighty things. Well, you have just come back this weekend from Singapore. And this is your second time in, what, the last four or five months that you've been there. And my, you can just see the glory of God upon you because those people are hungry for God. And, and any time they put a draw on the anointing, they're not disappointed. And, and you know, we, we many times from this great Lassie broadcasting talk about what's happening around the world. But, you know, America is starting to have that hunger for the presence and the power of the living God. Amen, Scott. I, I, it was a fantastic time in Asia, and uh, the, the Christians were so hungry there. I was doing a, a prayer seminar, and the people just packed into the building, and they were hungry to learn about what the Bible says about prayer. And then we prayed together, and the, the power of God came in the meeting so strong. And I, I know that we're starting to see that in America, too, and we're going to see it more. Because God's pouring out His Spirit all over the world. And one of the ways that comes is uh, through, our, through our prayers, through the effective, fervent prayers of the righteous. So uh, I agree with you. All over the world, people are hungry and are, are, are praying. The spirit of prayer is coming over them. And it's going to be, it's going to cause great things to happen because God hears and answers our prayers. Amen. Well, you've written a book on prayer. You, you preach so much on prayer. Uh, you stay tuned because Mary Alice will be traveling through the United States, ministering in many local churches. And if you're hungry for more of prayer, then you want to pay attention. You could even start praying for God to bring her to your city because she hears from heaven. Now let's go back to the service and worship the living God. Because he's, because he's given, given. Yeah. 
Praise the living God with me is Lawson Purdue. Now Lawson's an ICU graduate, and I tell you what, they treat him like a like a wonderful person around here because he is. Now, how many years have you been coming to camp meeting, Lawson? I've come here to the camp meeting in South Bend, Indiana, from Colorado for the past nine years. We came the first one in 1987, Seven. just before I entered Bible college here. Have you ever been disappointed coming to a camp meeting? I absolutely have never been disappointed coming to camp <laughs> meeting. Amen. It's wonderful, you know. Those of you in the South Bend area, let me just encourage you, come out. I know you. I know the schedule's busy. I know there's all kinds of obstacles, but be a mountain mover. Set some things aside and come out. There's plenty of seats available still for you. Billy Joe and Sharon Doherty will be ministering in a little while, but I'm telling you what, the Holy Ghost is ministering the whole time here. And if there's something you need in your life, if you need freedom in any area, come on out, be a part. It's so important, Lawson, for them to sit under this anointing and receive from the Holy Spirit. Amen. We really uh, personally appreciate uh, Billy Joe and Sharon Doherty. We first met them here in South Bend in 1987. We appreciate the simplicity that Billy Joe delivers the Word with. You know, there's no hype in his ministry. It's just the plain, simple truth of the Word of God that sets the captives free. Recently, my mother was going through a time of turmoil in her life, and uh, the people that she worked with uh, told her that she needed to enter a mental hospital. And we said, well, we don't believe that's the answer. Jesus is the answer. She came and spent time with us at our house at our church, and then she moved, and now she's attending uh, Billy Joe's Bible School. And praise God, she just totally turned on for Jesus. She went from being suicidal to just worshiping the Lord. And so praise God, we know there's deliverance in the name of Jesus and the word works. And we thank God for his servants that will be sharing it. Praise God. I tell you what, Jesus is the great physician. What he did for Lawson's family, he will do for you. He's even doing it now. You just meet, need to make a step towards the cross because freedom is coming your way. Jesus loves you. Let's go back to the service. Glory to
music opens the door for the gospel. And each and every night here at camp meeting, the music is something that is opening the door to some great messages from some tremendous speakers. We began the week with James Robeson, last night Rod Parsley, tonight Billy Joe Doherty, others during the week. But you know, the one common theme is Jesus. And in fact, Dr. Sumrall proclaims it to everybody here at camp meeting with a headline in the camp meeting newspaper, camp meeting today. There you see it. Jesus is our example. And enough said. Billy Joe Doherty, as Scott mentioned, and as his guest mentions, uh, delivers a very simplistic gospel, very straightforward message. Not a lot of hype, but I'll tell you what, there's a lot of truth to what Billy Joe Doherty says. You'll enjoy him tonight. Don't forget, prayer line counselors are available 24 hours a day. Yes, indeed, they're available during camp meeting, and we would like very much for you to give the prayer line counselors a call. All kinds of needs are being met this week during camp meeting. During the year, calls come in from around the country. N the needs are met, and certainly during camp meeting, that is no exception. A lot of relationship problems that are being solved through prayer, we'd like you to call 1-800-365-3732. If it's a physical healing you need, prayer line counselors are trained, able, and capable of helping you. I want to remind you that the tape series is available for the Camp Meeting 94 series. We do have the audio cassette tapes, 13 of the audio cassette tapes from Camp Meeting. There's a good shot of the album cover, the morning and evening services, and all of the sessions for just $100. For $250, you receive the evening video tapes. The entire uh, camp meeting each and every night of the evening services there, a gift of at least $250. And then for that gift of $1,000, and there's some of you out there that can help us in that way, you not only get the video tapes, the audio tapes, but you get the morning and evening services, the luncheons and the breakfast uh, services, the special message from Bob Harrison, and many, many others for that gift of at least $1,000. The number, though, to call is 1-800-365-3732. As we said, we're broadcasting live from South Bend, Indiana, and taking tonight's camp meeting as we're taking the entire week's camp meeting around the country via satellite. There are about 4 million satellite dishes out there, so each and every one of them hopefully will be clicked in to camp meeting in Billy Joe Doherty tonight. If you're not watching by way of satellite, maybe it's on stations in Tulsa or Denver, Indianapolis, South Bend, Grand Rapids, Hawaii, out there in Honolulu, Maui, Hilo, uh, Milwaukee. Regardless of where you're at, we welcome your participation in camp meeting and hope that you can join us. Well, after tonight, it will be John Hagee on Wednesday. On Thursday, Phil Pringle will be here. On Friday, Clinton and Sarah Utterbach, as we flip the page... And then on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, Alf Ekman. Fantastic speakers. Uh, truly one of the better lineups for camp meeting. And uh, each and every year it just seems to get better. And uh, I don't know how it can even get any better, but uh, it seems like the Lord every year brings something special to each and every one of the sessions. And tonight, of course, will be no exception with the ministry and the music of the Doherty's, Billy Joe and Sharon. Scott Anderson is standing by at Christian Center. And Scott, how are you doing tonight? Oh, Craig, we're blessed. God is so good to us. Uh, the presence of God is so strong in this place, and I'm sure it's the, the same anointing is going out through the TV, through the shortwave. It, it's bouncing off that satellite and, and into those homes. So we, we're just expecting thousands upon thousands of people to be set free by the power of God, encouraged by the power of God. I want to encourage you, call the prayer line. There's people there that want to pray for you. They, they know how to pray. They will help you. They will encourage you. So call the number on the screen, just like Craig told you. And, and I tell you, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Right now is with me Brother Colstead from Norway. Welcome to South Bend, brother. Thank you very much. All the way for camp meeting, huh? Uh, yes, and I, uh, I'm going to travel a little afterwards, but mostly for the camp meeting. Uh, you, you're going you're gonna to storm through America preaching the gospel. I don't know why. I think it's more receiving. Uh, we have got so much of this uh, from this camp meeting, and it's not a, it's not a difficult gospel. Uh, I, I don't think it's a, it's a question of uh, uh, what's the new thing, but what we do with what we got, it's a simple gospel that's going to change. Um, and that, that's what we hear here tonight, and what we hear this night, it's the simple uh, changing gospel of God. 
simple gospel. I like that. The gospel is very simple. I don't know how we made it so complicated, uh, but it's simple. It saves, it heals, it delivers, it changes a man into a new man, it changes a woman into a new woman. Uh, Jesus can live so big in, in, in a person when, when they just submit to the Holy Ghost. It's, uh, that's the key, is yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit. Saying, Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Uh, we're glad that you came. Now, now you're a graduate from Libet Sword. Pastor Ulf, Pastor Ulf will be here later in the week. What, what can you tell the audience about Pastor Ulf? I believe Pastor Ulf has, a, has anointing of, of breakthrough and, um, and how, to, how to blast the country open for the gospel. And I believe that uh, we need that, that apostolic anointing of breakthrough. And I believe he, he has it. And uh, those people who will listen to will receive some of it. So, so listen to him, everything he's got, and, uh, and he will bless you. Amen. Amen. Well, we're ready for breakthrough. As the title of this camp, mean, camp meeting is Freedom, Breaking the Chains, we command every chain to be broken in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, now, back to you, Craig. All right, Scott. Thank you very much. Brother you, Eckman's brother. church, by the way, uh, uh, awful who will be here on Saturday and Sunday. His church is very active. His school is very active. He has over 1,000 students from over 30 nations around the world. So that's quite exciting uh, what Alf Ekman is doing today, and he'll bring his ministry to South Bend, Indiana this Saturday and Sunday. Don't you dare miss it. If you can't be here in person, don't forget about the tapes. They're waiting for you, audio-visual tapes. You name it, 1-800-365-3732. We mentioned we're taking the broadcast, the TV signal around the country tonight, and we're also taking the signal around the world by way of international shortwave radio, and it was our our pleasure, our privilege this year, this past year, to sign on yet another shortwave station. This one is going to the Far East, and KWHR is taking the message of camp meeting to areas where it's never been before. It's a life-changing gospel, and that signal is booming right now into China and throughout Asia and other places, too, through the services of uh, KWHR and WHRI, places into Europe and South America. It's a mighty vehicle for the gospel, and it's being used tonight during camp meeting, and there's some very special things that are going to be happening uh, as a result of using both radio and television to the glory of God. 1-800-365-3732, the phone number. Don't forget those prayer line counselors. They're, they're waiting for you tonight. They'd love to hear from you. We also have uh, not only the prayer line counselors and the great messages from Christian Center, Cathedral of Praise, but we have some special music for you tonight. Uh, not only the music from the platform at the Cathedral of Praise from Sharon Doherty, but we also have Priscilla, Priscilla Ingle with us. So as we prepare to bring you Priscilla Ingle and music, don't forget again to respond by calling 1-800-365-3732. Call now, and the prayer line counselors will help you in their very best way possible.
Praise God. Welcome back to Christian Center Cathedral of Praise. Behind me, Phil Pringle is receiving an, an offering right now, and you can have the same opportunity to send gifts into the sea broadcasting to help support this wonderful ministry and outreaches. We thank you for your support. We can't do what we're doing without your help. So praise God for faithful people. Right now with me all the way from Lagos, Nigeria is Tunde Bakari. Praise God, brother. Welcome to South Bend. Thank you very much. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. It's good. The Spirit of God is very strong in this place and He's changing some things in people's hearts, isn't He? Wonderful. It's been so great since I came on Monday. Thank God for the word that came, that God sent by his spirit and his servant to us this meeting. Mm -hmm. If you've been here, you can never be the same again. But the anointing of the Holy Spirit was so strong and impacted lives. And I believe we're going back to our stations, refreshed, ready to fire again. <laughs> Amen. That, that's a whole attitude of our heart. Every time we come into a meeting, we determine that we will not leave the same as we came in. That's the best time to adjust your life is when things are going well. You know, we, 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 we like to wait till we crash and then we fix it. But you know, when your life is going well is the best time to listen to the Spirit of God and He'll make little changes. What, what, what's God doing in Nigeria? Well, I pastor a church in Lagos, Nigeria, Lateran Assembly. Uh, we are over 5,000 people. We started about five years ago. Dr. Lester Summer was there December 1993. He was our guest, and it was a wonderful time. And this is my first time to his camp meeting. I've been so well blessed, and I'm going back to be a blessing. Oh, amen. Well, and Dr. Summerall gets everywhere. Uh, you know, here in America, it seems most of the news that we hear from overseas is always bad news. If we isolated ourselves to only what the news said, we would think it's a hopeless situation. But we know there are revivals breaking out all over the world, and our news does not report that. Uh, you know, coming out of Africa, we hear of all the turmoil, but yet there's a church five years old of 5,000 people that radiates the glory of God. How are you doing this? Well, by means of strange and no man prevail, <laughs> the ones that are sent by the Holy Spirit, God will not only send the provision, there will be the presence of His divine enablement to do it, so we are, can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Yes, you, you just have to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, and that's what we're doing, and we're getting results, and you, you'll be surprised that ours is not the biggest church in Nigeria. There are bigger churches than that, mega churches, city-shaking, nation region, uh, that are shaking the nations and shaking the cities. God will not be denied. He will have a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. You know, this morning, uh, Pastor Rod Parsley preached a powerful message that, uh, oh, I just, you know, I was just in, in, entranced in it. It was wonderful. But he, he said, a man asked him, how do you preach like I do, or like you do? And he said, it's easy, I don't do it. I just get possessed by the Holy Ghost. Yes, we're possessed by the Holy Ghost, and the one who possesses us is the one that speaks through us. Let everyone that ministers, minister as the oracle of God. It's a simple instruction. And if one plugs into power, the power flows through you unto the people. You worship him, and through you is able to serve his people, to service them, knocking sicknesses and diseases and sin and poverty out of their lives, and raising a new breed of firebrand preachers and generation that will not bow to bell. <laughs> so, so we would just tell the, the wonderful audience, let the power of God flow through your life. It'll change those situations. It'll change those circumstances. And not only will you be blessed, but, but in Genesis 12, God told Abram, I will bless you, and you will be a blessing. And this is what we strive to do as Christians, is to become a blessing. Uh, in this nation, we're finally waking out of this bless me thing to be a blessing. Uh, so let the power of God flow through your life. Freedom, breaking the chains. You can be free. Back to you, Craig. All right, Scott, thank you very much. Quite exciting, isn't it, to see what one life can do if it's directed toward God and His service. You think of Dr. Summerall and his over 60 years of ministry. Untold thousands and millions now have been recycled back into the ministry. And, and you saw the young man from Nigeria, the young pastor who was touched by Dr. Summerall just a few months ago, December of 1993. This young man making it to camp meeting for the very first time, energized, and he's taking now the good news again back to his church where I believe he said there are five or 10,000. So it's, it's unbelievable what, um, what God can do through his messengers. And it doesn't make any difference who you are, what you are, what your past has been. 
you can be a part of this ministry of touching lives. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior, tonight is a perfect time to allow Him to come into your heart and to know Him as your Savior. Call that number, 1-800-365-3732. Prayer line counselors are there to help you. I want to remind you again that this week the speakers will be Billy Joe and Sharon Doherty tonight. Tomorrow night, John Hagee from San Antonio, Texas, one of the most renowned preachers in the country right now. He formed a church back in the uh, mid and late 80s in uh, San Antonio, Texas. He now is preached around the world. John Hagee will be here on Wednesday. Don't you dare miss that. Phil Pringle on Thursday. On Friday, it'll be the Utterbox from Nanuet, New York. And we've been telling you a lot about the Utterbox. I gotta tell you the truth, folks. I'm pretty excited about seeing the Utterbox. We get to see them maybe once a year during the National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Washington, D.C. And uh, I can tell you firsthand that that's gonna be a very special night on Friday the Utterbox here at Christian Center Cathedral of Praise during Camp Meeting 94. And then on Saturday and on Sunday, it'll be the ministry of Alf Ekman. I want to thank our stations for being a very special part of Camp Meeting, taking the service live. And we are right now beaming into Denver and Tulsa and Honolulu and Milwaukee and Indianapolis and South Bend, as we mentioned earlier, places all around the country down the Lassie Broadcasting Network. And then beyond that, up on Galaxy 415, for those of you that are watching by satellite. And it's nice because we'll present three or four hours of camp meeting. And then through the night, if there's something that maybe you missed earlier, you can see it again as we repeat the sessions through the overnight hours. So make camp meeting a very special part of this week. It will change your life. It will transform you. It will really add something to wherever you are. If you know the Lord, it will make you an even stronger Christian. If you don't know the Lord, this is the week that your life can be changed forever. 1-800-365-3732. Don't forget, the audio tapes are there for you, the 13 audio tapes, and you'll get uh, the complete package there for that gift of at least $100. The audio tapes of the morning and evening services. And then for that gift of at least $250, you'll receive the video cassette tape of every one of the evening services. We began the week with James Robeson. Uh, last night it was Rod Parsley. Tonight it will be Billy Joe and Sharon Doherty. Uh, and then all through the week, the different speakers right there, that gift of $250. And then for the gift of $1,000, the audio tapes, the video tapes, and then the special uh, luncheons and breakfast meetings. In fact, we have one breakfast meeting coming up on Saturday the 18th with Bob Harrison. For those of you in the area, it will be a Christian Center church at 8.30 in the morning. Bob Harrison is a renowned motivational speaker. There are corporations and companies around the country that request this man, Bob Harrison, to motivate their staffs, to get their business plan in order. Well, Bob Harrison will be here not only to talk a little finance, but he'll so also be here to help you in your own personal life, too. Bob was here just months ago during one of our special meetings, and uh, looking forward again to seeing Bob Harrison here during Camp Meeting 94. Don't you miss it. And another great opportunity to take Bob Harrison home with you by calling that number, 800-365-3732. There will be financial uh, elements in that tape series. Uh, Bob's message will be filled with different things that you can apply to your life in a realistic way. You'll want to listen to those time and time again. Plug them into your car, uh, you know, plug them into the VCR at home, uh, whatever you happen to do, uh, you will benefit by the Bob Harrison seminar coming up on Saturday. Well, we're going to take it back to the church, Scott Anderson, and the worship service going on now at Christian Center in South Bend. Oh! 
Praise God. Welcome back to Christian Center Cathedral of Praise. We're over here on the wing watching this wonderful praise and worship. With me is uh, Reverend Jim Hickey. Jim, welcome to camp meeting. Thank you. It, it didn't take you long to get here, just from Niles, Michigan. <laughs> Niles, Michigan. That's where you're from, huh? Well, that's good. We came all the way from uh, Massachusetts. Yes, yes. Well, I tell you, the presence of God is so strong in this place. Uh, we've just started in this camp meeting, and there are thousands of people being set free and changed and, and lifted up and encouraged by the power of the Most High God. Yeah, that's uh, really important, Scott, you know, as we, as we come here, that we come here with an expectancy to receive from God that which He has for us. You know, no matter whether we've fallen down, whether we've thrown something out, whether we've run from Christ, this is a time to come back to Him, to get set free, to get right back on the road and move forward. God wants us to move forward. It's time for the body of Christ to move forward. Uh, we can serve God without fear, and we can be free from so many of these things that ensnare us. That's why people don't run with God as fast as they can and as strong as they can because they have these little anchors. And, and we just see by the Spirit of God tonight these anchors and these lines being severed once and for all. Yeah, I believe these camp meetings are getting to ready to mobilize the body of Christ. The body of Christ, for so many times, it's kind of been a quiet body of Christ, but these meetings are energizing, impacting people's lives so they can move and mobilize and do those things which Christ has asked them to do. Oh, man. Well, I tell you what, the power of God is quite evident in our midst. Craig, how are those phone lines doing? I, I was just... Uh, reading through here a couple minutes ago the, the uh, prayer request from the last couple days and I tell you there are some very interesting prayer requests I see them from cancer to family restoration to uh, people being set free from the spirit of fear uh, I tell you prayer works sure does God I tell you what I, I think you hit it on the head when you said family restoration there mm -hmm. are families that are being healed during this week of camp meeting we have seen the same request that I think you have right there in your hands now uh, the, the prayer needs that are coming in, a lot of them concern family relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, husband to wife, uh, you know, parent to child, those kinds of things, even aunts and uncles. And uh, God's doing a mighty work here this week, restoring the home, and that is so vitally important these days. Amen. You know, if I could just speak a word of encouragement, now is not the time to give up hope. The, the power of God is working in so many families. You know, from a pastoral standpoint, Craig, I see, I see broken families all the time, uh, and it can be discouraging, but also it's an opportunity for the love of God to invade a home, and, and when, you see that recon when you see the reconciliation work, I mean, it, you just want to see it again and again, so don't be discouraged, be encouraged. Craig, let's go back to you now. All right, Scott, thank you very much. We are called to the Ministry of Reconciliation. If you're a pastor like Scott Anderson, he pastors a marvelous church up in the Kalamazoo area. If you're an individual, uh, if, you're, if you're a layman, uh, again, the Ministry of Reconciliation is ours, and we need to reconcile not only with those within our own family, but those around us, too, at work, at play, you name it. Uh, God can do a mighty work if you're open to what he's willing to do in your life. Proline counselors are, are very busy, as Scott mentioned. They're taking the phone calls, uh, not only for those tapes and, and videos that are available, but taking calls from people who are in real need tonight. 1-800-365-3732. I want to also mention that children's services are available during the week here at camp meeting. Uh, you still have time. This is only Tuesday night. Camp meeting will last through Sunday. We heard the pastor who was just on with Scott from Massachusetts. I figure if you left from Massachusetts tonight, you could probably be here tomorrow night, even if you drove my car. You could get here by, by tomorrow night to take in the services of um, John Hagee. So regardless of where you are, come on in and join us, and uh, we will be waiting for you. Let's go to Dr. Summerall now at Christian Center. And, and, and Sharon says, it's a, is it our time right now? And I said, uh, uh, yeah. I didn't even look to see where Delron was. So that means you're excited also. We are so delighted and happy uh, to, to, to have the Doherty's with us tonight. Uh, how many times have you been to Russia? About uh, 20. 20 times. First one with you. Yeah. And then we went 18 times in a row. Yeah, every and one. Then we, week went, of his life to then we went again in January. We're going again in September. Is that right? In September. Yeah. 
Uh, what other countries have you ministered in over there? We've been in Albania recently, started a church in a Bible school, following the spirit ship into that country. And a couple of times we're headed back and we're believing to get into Croatia also in the days ahead and Czech this fall, what was formerly Czechoslovakia. Yeah, they haven't, they haven't had a gunshot there in two or three years. The American Navy is sitting right out in the harbor. And so they have peace there. And, and uh, you can have open meetings and everybody just goes about their business. So welcome. Hallelujah. Let me know in advance. I'll, I'll be there and uh, carry you a briefcase for you. <laughs> you won't take anything out either. <laughs> Hallelujah. They passed one of the finest churches in the world, raised it up from the very bottom, and, uh, and it's so lovely to always be with them. They're people of God that love the Lord, and let's give them a big welcome tonight. Glory. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Glory. We're glad to be here, and we're especially appreciative of this church and Feed the Hungry, Dr. Sumrall, was the one who opened the door for us to go into Russia. Back when we were here at camp meeting 1991, he said he was going to uh, Russia and hold a crusade. I was sitting right over here when I first heard him said it, say it, and it just leaped inside of me. I should go, or the Lord said it, you are to go and be with him. Well, we never invite ourselves anywhere to go and preach and you know so afterwards they have a place back here where everyone eats after the service and so that particular night after he had made announcements he called me up and I preached and then when we went back there and ate and he called me over to sit down and I thought I'd just get a little more information and I said so you're going to Russia Dr. Summerall he whirled around and said yeah and you're going with me too And we That's went, it's we all we needed. And we went, and it was a wonderful harvest. So what's happened there, and you can be encouraged, the seeds of Feed the Hungry um, spawned those crusades. Some 400,000 people made decisions for Christ in those 18 months of crusades. Over 2 million uh, Bibles and our This New Life books went into the city. And today, the Bible school, we've had like four graduations of the students there who are reaching out into the nation. And it all started with a Feed the Hungry crusade there. Thank God for it. Hallelujah. We're appreciative. And we're a team, and Sharon's going to kick off first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Micah 7, 8, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy, for if I fall, I shall arise. The Lord shall be a light to me. Though I might sit in darkness, he will cause light to be in me and to be to toward me. And we will rise up no matter what we have faced for the resurrection power of Jesus Christ lives and abides within his people, his believers, who will believe and release their faith in him. Hallelujah. of your lies, your disappointments and your failures, that's who's they are, they'll not defeat me, if I fall, I shall arise, I shall arise, I shall arise, I'm rising.
looked like it was all over. That's when Jesus rose up from the grave because death couldn't hold him. Satan's power was broken. Think about it. And his resurrection is yours and mine today. a word for you today doesn't matter what's happened I'm telling you you've received Christ in your heart you have got the resurrection power of Jesus and the revelation of that that word in your heart will cause you to rise up and the devil can't push you down he cannot hold your life any longer no matter what it is there's no sin there's no stronghold there is no failure, there is no nothing, no sickness, disease, nothing that is greater than the power of God's Word and of His blood and of the name of Jesus in our lives Hallelujah. as we release our faith in it. It's time to just live by faith. Amen? Faith in what God's Word says, not in what you hear, not in the reports of those that are around you that would speak into your ears. The, anything against what this word says. We must stand upon the word of God in the day that we're living in. Now is the time that our lives would be right with God. We are in a time where God has been digging deep and he has been revealing hidden things. You know, we prayed that in the 80s. We prayed, you know, God, reveal the hidden things, reveal the hidden things. Well, now that he's doing it, a lot of people don't like to reveal the hidden things because he's digging deep in all of our lives, all of us, and he's, re he's speaking to us on attitudes. He's speaking to us on actions. He's speaking to us on things that the Holy Spirit tried to talk to you about maybe a few years ago, but you shoved it away thinking, oh, well, you know, it's okay. A lot of people do that or, you know, I'm all right. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I got a hold of this message, the message of authority, the believer of faith, or whatever. But you know what? These messages, these words cannot profit us if we are not 
in a right relationship and position with Jesus. Because James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves unto God first. Then you can resist the devil and he will flee from you. And there is a submitting of ourselves to the working of the Holy Spirit that once we do, if we judge ourselves, we'll not be judged, he says. And so he gives us that opportunity to judge and look within our hearts and say, God, forgive me if my attitude was wrong in that situation or if, if I'm just got that attitude kind of on me on a lot of time, situations and it's become a stronghold. Lord, forgive me, cleanse me. I don't want that as a part of my life. You see, Jesus is coming back for a church that's without spot or blemish. He's coming back for a holy people un unto him. People who, who, and I'm not talking about a religious uh, legalism. I'm talking about where the Holy Spirit is working so in our lives that we look like Jesus. Is that what you want to be? You want to look like him? When people look into your eyes they, and they melt or they start to cry and say, I can't look at you without feeling... You know, Jesus just looking into my life. Amen? That's what we want. Now is the time to repent. Repentance means to turn, not only ask forgiveness, but to turn. Go ahead. And walk a different direction. To run away from sin. To run away from the, the weight, the sin that would try to so easily beset us. In order so that we can run the race that's set before us. Now is the time to repent. To lay our lives on the line, friend. Now's the time that we'd all be intent to leave the lukewarmness and sin behind. To be changed. Let your life be rearranged by Him. Now's the time to let Jesus have His way. Are you struggling with those old desires? that seem to come over and over it's the flesh and is it hard for you to find the time for prayer before God's word no matter how old you may be in the Lord is it hard to resist temptation even if you're in the ministry when it comes knocking at your door You've got to run from it. Because there's a battle for our souls, people. We've got to let Jesus really be Before it's too late, let your life, let it be rearranged. Now's the time to let Jesus have his way. Now's the time to let Jesus. Lord Jesus, have your way in my life. 
I'm tired of living my way. I know that you came for all of us who are sheep, who have gone astray, gone our own way, and the Lord God has laid on you the iniquity of us all. Thank you, Jesus, for bearing our sin, our disobedience. Help me, Jesus, to be sensitive to what you did on the cross, to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit, and to not do what I want to do, but to do what you want me to do in my everyday life in my attitudes, in my actions, live through me. Control me. I thank you, Jesus, for the power of your Holy Spirit setting me free tonight and helping me. Amen. Hallelujah. We are washed, we are regenerated by the Holy Spirit. We are cleansed by the blood. The Word of God is what is able to build us up, to carry us, and to take us forward in our lives. All of these things, it's one thing to know about them. It's another thing to do them. Jesus said that, Why call you me Lord, Lord, except that you would do what I tell you to do? And he says the person that is the wise person, is the one who's not only a hearer of the Word and knows a lot of messages and a lot of words, but is a doer also. For that man is like a person who built their house upon a rock. When the storm came, there's storms all around us. When the storm came, it beat on that house, but the house stood firm. All through the storm it stood, and it was still standing when the storm was over. But the foolish man was the one who built his house on the sand. That was the hearer, the person that went to church regularly, maybe attended a whole lot of conferences such as this one and such as some of the ones we've had. But yet they were not doers of the Word. They just were hearers. They liked to talk about it, and, and they could talk the talk, you know. But they weren't doers of the Word. And he says that person, the same storms came, but the house fell and great was the fall of that house because the house was not built upon being a hearer and doer of the word of God and not just doing the little promises you like but doing the whole counsel of God's word you see we're in an hour where we must obey God we must if we are going to be the overcomers God's called us to be in this hour I was I was reading in Ephesians today because I don't know about you, but I've, been, I've seen some articles lately on uh, some of the uh, churches that are starting to rise up in our nation here of um, gay churches. And we have people who have come out of that lifestyle in our church and are born again, spirit-filled, fill, filled with the Word of God and following after Jesus. And I have one person that kind of keeps me in, uh, you know, touch with the what's happening out in the media, you know, get, tells me the articles. But uh, I was reading one even today in the, our media, and the thought that came to me, it doesn't matter what they've, who they've written for in the past, ghost written for. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, if one time in their past that they had any, had an experience with God. What matters most is where they are with Jesus now. And the scripture says in Galatians 1, eight, uh, 7, there are some that have come to trouble and would trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, he even included, included himself here, Paul included himself, if I or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. You see, I share that not from a judgmental or... Uh, or trying to speak condemnation to people, I say it to you out of warning and out of love from my heart that we must get right with God. I know enough that within the heart, deep within the heart of every one of these people, 
there is a knowing that there is a question of eternity. And whether or not they, they've hardened their heart to it, whatever. We, even if you go back to the 11th century and try to pull out where the early church, some part of the early church had this in the church, let's go back to the beginning. It wasn't Adam and Steve. It was Adam and Eve. God created a man and woman in the beginning. He set in order that which was good. It was then after Adam and Eve partook the fruit that sin entered into the world and all of its perversions. And so let's go back to the beginning. Let's look at the whole counsel of God's Word and let's know Jesus more than we've ever known Jesus in this hour before. And we move on and, we, you know, I looked through, but I was reading in Ephesians today and I was looking at it how that throughout Ephesians it starts and it talks about a believer's position in the church a believer's position in Christ. We're raised up, seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, above principalities, above spiritual wickedness. We are above them. He is the head. We are the body. And under our feet should be the devil. But just because that's the position that we are called to be in, we must experience that by walking in it according to all that is in the Scripture here. And he moves on. He talks about uh, your Christian living one with another. And especially in, I, I moved over into Ephesians 5 and I was looking at it and it was talking about, you know, if you've got fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, don't even let it be named among you as become saints. Filthiness, foolish talking, all of these things. And he says, no whoremonger, unclean person, or covetous man or idolater is going to enter I into the inheritance of the kingdom of God. Let, verse 6, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. And then he follows it in the next verse and says, don't be a partaker with them. He was talking to children of God. One was children of disobedience and one was children of obedience. And he says, don't let this stuff be even among you. Don't let it be named among you as becomes a saint. And then he goes on and he talks about the relationship of husbands and wives. And see, all of that, he, he leads up to his final word of be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. And most of the time, we just jump from chapter 1 to chapter 6. And then we kind of individualize those other chapters in themselves. But see, this was an entire letter. And he ended the letter with, now, my final word is be strong in the Lord. Put on this whole armor of God. But before all this, it was understood that they got a hold of that part before they put on the whole armor of God. You got me? We can't leave out one part and take one. Let's take the whole counsel of God's Word. Let's stand in all that God has given to us and be strong in Him, not in our flesh, but be strong in Him. See, when you're not right with God, everything you're trying to do, no matter if you can quote lots of scriptures or if you can uh, even get up and teach from, a, from the scriptures, because there's people that do it. My mother did before she was saved. She was a good pastor's wife, but she was not for sure of her salvation. She was pastoring a church for, with my dad during that time, trying her best out of her own good works to do good. But you see, she came to that place in her life where she realized, I don't know for sure that I'm saved. And when she did get her life right with God and begin to seek the power of the Holy Spirit in her life, and the Spirit bore witness that she was a child of God, and she began to then seek the, the deeper walk of the Holy Spirit in her life and began to uh, operate in that. Hallelujah. And so I know people, I know flesh and blood people, that can preach in a church, that can, can say the, the words, but are not what is written. And so God says, get right with me. Get right with me today. Operate in your position in Christ. We reign with Jesus over all principalities, but we don't experience that reigning unless we're walking in that right position with him. Then we're in that place where we can command the devil and the demons to leave, and they must go in Jesus' name. Go ahead. We reign with Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We reign with Jesus. Hallelujah. We got the wrong little tune there, and we're going on. Hallelujah. 
by his blood. Hallelujah. He who descended to the lower parts of the earth has ascended up into heaven for us and he has broken Satan's chains he has stripped him of his power he's given us his name to reign with him this hour we reign with Jesus of the principalities we reign with Jesus he has won the victory we reign with Jesus and as we stand in faith in him we will overcome by his word and the blood of the Lamb if we are crucified with Christ now we live and no longer are we in bondage to sin for now we have his righteousness and dominion over sin and as we keep his word and pray and lift our hearts to him we reign with jesus over principalities we reign with jesus he has won the victory we reign with jesus as we stand in faith in Him, we will overcome by His Word and the blood of the Lamb. Listen to this. As He was sent, so He has sent us to this world to bring forgiveness and healing to all. As his spirit flows through you, preach deliverance to the captives and liberate the bruised. We reign with Jesus over principalities. You reign with Jesus, for he has won the victory. We reign with Jesus, and as we stand in faith in him, says we were not redeemed with silver or with gold but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ your redemption your redemption from sin your redemption from its effects upon your life I'm telling you when you come to Jesus and you lay your life down to him there's an anointing of the Holy Spirit that can break yokes of sin off of your life habits if that's adultery fornication uncleanness of any kind or if it's uh, drugs, alcohol, the anointing of God is there at that moment to break that thing, to instantly deliver. But what some people do is they only want to ask Jesus to come in and to be comfortable with him, and then they want to keep, they want to go back. They think they've got to go back to that sin later. They think in the back of their mind, well, if it ever came around again, I'd probably you know submit to it and when it does come around a lot of times they think to themselves I really don't have to do this but it's been a habit in my life and you know it just is 
It's just been something I've done. So they do it again. And then it becomes a greater stronghold to them than ever before. But you see, Jesus' blood can break that stronghold. Do you know Jesus' blood can break the stronghold of homosexuality? He can break the stronghold of adultery. He can deliver you from those unclean, uh, perverted, pornography, whatever it is. He can set you free in your mind as well as in your heart and in your body from it. But you must lay your life down to him. You must give him everything in your life and just say, Jesus, I am yours. Thank you for your redeeming blood in my life. And I'm telling you, that blood can not only cleanse you from your sin, but there's power in his blood to heal your bodies. Because we know that the blood that flowed from his back, the stripes that he bore, was for the healing of our bodies by his stripes we were healed, redeemed from the curse, redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And so we stand in that redeeming blood, and that is why the devil hates it. And that is why the devil tries to talk you out of it. And that is why the devil tries to bring back to your mind your past. But your past, once you've released faith in the blood of Jesus, your past is forgiven. Your past is cleansed. And God says in his words, it, word, it is as if he believes, it is as if you have never sinned as far as he is concerned. So when someone else tries to bring up your past to you, you simply say, that person died a long time ago. They are no longer alive. Who you see right now is a new person. And another thing, Romans says, when you understand the power of the blood of Jesus in your life, Romans says sin doesn't have any control, any dominion over you anymore. And when you say, I just can't stop, you are denying the blood of Jesus. When you say, I just can't get out of this relationship, I'm in love with them, and it is an immoral relationship, you are denying the power of the blood of Jesus. And the power of the blood of Jesus can cause you to do anything. You see, Jesus, Jesus inside of us, he wants to be real in us, people. He wants to live in us, not just be a name of Christian. He wants to live in our lives so the world can see Jesus in us. Hallelujah. We are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We are set free. Go ahead, brother. Hallelujah. We are healed by his blood. Tonight, if you've come here and there's something that's been hanging on you, some oppression of the devil tonight's your night to let go of it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Get a hold of it. Set free his blood in Jesus' name. By the blood of the Lamb, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, set free, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Cause I'm saved by his grace, healed by the stripes that he bore. By the blood of the Lord, set me in Jesus' name. I 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand up together. Thank God for the blood. Oh, hallelujah. Let's begin to praise the Lord for his precious blood, for his mercy, for his grace. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. That's it. There's healing flowing right now. There's deliverance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for breaking chains of bondage setting captives free. Thank you, Lord, for restoring broken relationships, for healing, Lord, hearts that have been ripped apart. We thank you today that this is a day of wholeness in you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for opening every ear, eye, heart, and mind to receive the truth. And we thank you for confirming your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. In the name of Jesus, everybody shouted hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, before you're seated, give about four or five people a good high five. Hallelujah. We've got a little white book, this new life book, we want to give to all of you that are here. They'll be back on our table. It's the book. There's uh, over a million of them in English alone in many countries of the world. It's been published, and it is a book that lays out a, a plan of growth in your life in the salvation, then on to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, victory in our lives, and how to speak and confess God's Word. It'll be a, a great help to you as well as Sharon's tapes. Uh, she wrote those songs that you heard tonight, except for the one about uh, There's a Fountain Filled 
with uh, blood, but the redeemed part. So there might be a lot of songs you've not heard that would inspire your life. Uh, T.L. Osborne says Sharon's a preach singer. You get a sermon with every song. Not only before the song, but in the song. That is a message for you in your life. And it will be that way for you. And a lot of other books back there on healing and deliverance and victory. Uh, some little books on how to know the will of God and follow His voice. Open your Bible with me to Revelation 2. I was asked this afternoon what I was going to preach on. I said, on the Word. I said, could you be more specific? I said, from Genesis to Revelation. And I'm beginning in Revelation. We are to be overcomers. Amen. Overcoming in every area. I know many of you by now have already picked up that Sharon and I are both from L.A., Lower Arkansas. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you're born, you can be an overcomer. Doesn't matter where you've been, it's most important where you're headed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was born halfway between, between Froggy Level and Corny Creek. If you want to get a little handle on where we're coming from. <laughs> now to the church at Ephesus, there was a very special word. You remember this word came from the Lord Jesus Christ. It was given to an angel who delivered it to John on the Isle of Patmos, who sent the message to the seven churches and ultimately to us today. So it was a direct word from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And at the end of the word to the church at Ephesus, he said in verse 7, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Then the letter came to the church in Smyrna, and in verse 11, we read, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Now that tells us something here. In both of these, it means those who don't overcome won't eat of the tree of life and they will be hurt by the second death. This is an affirmative statement, and you must take the opposite as true also. To Pergamos, in verse 17, he said, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Then to the angel of Thyatira, that messenger or pastor to the church there, verse 26 and 27 in chapter 2, he says, He who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. He will rule them with a rod of iron. They will be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels. As I also have received from my Father, and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Then in chapter 3, to Sardis, down in verse 5 and 6, he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, 
let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Think about it a moment. If he says the overcomer will be clothed in white garments, then will the one who does not overcome also be clothed in white garments. If he that overcomes will not have his name blotted out of the book of life, then what happens to the person who doesn't overcome? He wouldn't have made the statement on one side if it wasn't true on the other side also. If he that overcomes, Jesus said, I will confess him before my Father and before his angels, then what happens to the person who doesn't overcome? He will not confess them. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, verse 12 and 13 in chapter 3, He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. He will go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to the church of Laodicea. Verse 21, To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my Father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We're living in a day and a time when people do not want to hear what the Spirit is saying. They want men to tickle their ears with lies and deceptions. But he who has an ear, a spiritual ear, not just these hanging off your head, but a, an ear in your heart to hear God's voice, hear what he's saying, the conditions of salvation don't change. The conditions for being in heaven don't change. Those who will be there will be a part of the overcoming bunch. Hallelujah. Jesus overcame, and he said everybody that will be there will also be overcomers. Very clearly, seven times. It doesn't matter how you interpret Revelation 2 and 3, and it's got many different interpretations, the seven ages of the church age or seven different aspects of the church all through this 2,000 year period. However you interpret it, it still comes out the same. We're to hear what the Spirit is saying and the Spirit is clearly saying the overcomers will receive the rewards. What does that mean? We must be overcomers. How many of you after reading, reading this are inspired to be an overcomer? We must be. There's no alternative. Now, the good news is we can be. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not by your education. It's not by your degrees. It's not by whether you graduated from Bible school or not. It's something that is available to every person. We shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. Turn over with me to 1 John chapter 5. Know it and settle it in your spirit. I must be an overcomer. I can be an overcomer, and I will be. I must be. We have to know that. <clears throat> Sharon referred to some things that are going on in our land where people are condoning homosexuality and saying that You'll go to heaven that way. There are whole people groups that believe you can go to heaven whether you come up the trail of Buddha or Muhammad. They say there are many different trails to the top of the mountain and whichever one you choose, just so you get to the top, God's there. That is an untruth, but millions of people are accepting it. We must not let go of God's standards. What do you spoke of? Even though things may look difficult, remember, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Whatever he says, that is the best path to take. 
and God's grace will be there to help you. How are we going to overcome? 1 John 5, look at it with me. Chapter 5, verse 4 and verse 5. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. How many of you are born of God? Then you qualify to be a world overcomer. We were born again, and when we were born again, we were born to win. We were born into a family of winners. Whatever is born of God. In other words, when God put his nature inside of you, it was an overcoming nature. We think of God is love. That love was placed inside of us. But one of the things Jesus made clear there in Revel Revelation 3 was that he overcame. And when the seed of the life of God gets on the inside of us, that overcoming ability is birthed inside of us. You have the spiritual genes of victory in your life. The spiritual new birth that took place, place the very resurrection of power, power of God inside of your life. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our what? Our faith is the connection between what God did in, his, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and our lives here on the earth. There has to be a connecting link. And he says, your faith, my faith, is that connection that hooks us up, that we can walk in the victory that Jesus obtained. Every person that's born again, we know we've been given the measure of faith. Faith comes by hearing. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Then he asked the question again, who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. How many of you are believers that Jesus is the Son of God? Now there's the overcoming power. It's hooked in to our faith in Jesus Christ. Now, what is the world? 1 John 2, 15. All that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and what? and the pride of this life. Now, who is uh, the ruler over that world system? The prince of the power of the air, the prince of this world comes, Jesus said, and he has nothing in me. What world was he talking about? We know God owns the earth and the fullness thereof. It's that world of sin, that world of the control of degenerate or lost people, that Satan rules in. But when you're born again and the life of God comes in you, you can say the same thing Jesus did. The prince of this world may come, but he has nothing inside of me. He may be the ruler over that world that lives in the lust of the flesh, in the pride of life, in, in the uh, lust of the eyes, but I have been delivered out of the power of that darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. I'm in a new kingdom. I have a new king. And the old king has no more dominion over my life. How can we say when you're born again, you're a born winner? Because of what Jesus did, he whipped the devil. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He bore our sins in his body. He bore the body of sin in his death on the cross so that when we identify with him in our faith, Romans 6 tells it, that we are buried with him in baptism and we are raised with him like as Christ was raised up from the dead, even so we walk in newness of life. We have identified with everything that Jesus did. And because he overcame, we overcome. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. 1 John 4, 4. Now, these three temptations, say them with me. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 
Those are the same three temptations that Adam and Eve went through in the Garden of Eden. I'm going to take you to Genesis just real quickly here. Remember, when Eve looked at the fruit of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which God said, you shall not eat of it, for in the day you eat it, you shall die. But the serpent had come and said, you won't die. And she what? She saw that it was good. It was pleasant to her eyes. It would taste good, the lust of the flesh. It was pleasant to the eyes, the lust of the eyes. And it would also what? Make her wise, which is the pride of life. So there you have the same three basic temptations that every one of our, us face, Adam and Eve faced in the garden. Now they failed. They disobeyed God. And the moment they disobeyed, they surrendered the authority that God had given in Genesis, 20, uh, Genesis 1, 28. They surrendered that authority, that dominion, over into the hands of the enemy. It was transferred authority. Remember, to whomever you serve, you make them your boss or your Lord. You become their servant. And they became a servant of sin. And we know the author of sin is Satan. So they became a servant of Satan. And the authority that the human race was intended to have was snatched in that moment. Thank God the second Adam came Amen. to take the reins back the authority, the dominion that was intended for mankind was regained and it began with the temptation in the wilderness. How did Jesus regain it? We know in his death, burial, and resurrection, but he demonstrated his victory even before the cross when Satan came and tempted him in the same three ways. Turn these stones into bread, which would be the lust of the flesh. Then he took him upon a pinnacle of the temple and said, Jump off, for he will give his angels what? Charge over you. What would that be? Pride of life. Then he took him upon a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world, all their glitz. And he said, It will all be yours if you bow down and worship me. What would you have? In each of these temptations, we see the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He faced the same thing every one of us are facing. The good news is Jesus overcame. The same, think of this for a moment, the same weapons that Jesus used in his earth walk are the ones that are delivered to the believer today. When Jesus left heaven and was born in a manger in Bethlehem, he left, left or laid aside all those mighty powers that would be his outside of being a human being on the earth. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15 says he took upon him human flesh. He was made like us. He was tempted in every point like as we are. So he was totally man. Think of it. He was born of the Spirit because the Spirit, the angel Gabriel had said to Mary, will come upon you so that which is born of you shall be the Son of the Most High God. So he was born of the Spirit. How many of you are born of the Spirit? John 3 says we must be born again and we're born of the Spirit. And then at the age of 30, Jesus went in to the Jordan River and he was water baptized. How many of you have been water baptized? Part of the power that we have comes from that identification. But at the moment of water baptism, the Spirit of God descended like a dove. And John, for a moment, operated in that discerning of spirits, and he saw into the spirit world. Not a dove, but the Spirit of God who descended in the gentleness, likeness, as a way a dove would land, landing and coming upon Jesus. And we know what happened. Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. How many of you have been anointed with the Holy Ghost and power? Isaiah said that because there was no intercessor, no deliverer, Ezekiel refers to it also, that he, the son of righteousness, 
took upon him the armor of God. The same armor that's listed in Ephesians 6 is the armor that our Lord Jesus wore. He put on that battle helmet of salvation. He put on the breastplate of righteousness. He put on the belt of truth. He put on his shoes, the good news of peace. He had come to announce good news. He took the shield of faith, and in the temptation in the wilderness, we see the mighty sword come out of his mouth. It is written. Hear the word of the Lord. Everything Jesus had to fight the devil, you have today. Everything that he had to be an overcomer, he has given to you. People perish for the lack of knowledge. If you don't know you've been given these weapons or you don't know how to use them or you don't know that Jesus overcame and transferred his victory to you in the moment you were born again, if you don't know that, then the devil keeps you down under. In fact, a little bit of depression can keep you down under. In fact, just one comment off the 6 o'clock news can keep you down under. I'm not trying to pick on you guys in Australia, but... <clears throat> can keep you under the devil's oppression. <laughs> one feeling, one thought can come and people can go into an area of fear, wrong desire pulling them if you don't know the truth. Now, this is a freedom camp meeting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For us to be free in every area, we must be overcomers overcoming and you need to know it we must say it with me we must be overcomers we, must be overcomers. we, can, be overcomers. we can be overcomers I shall be an overcomer I am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony I testify I'm an overcomer hallelujah Take your faith and use it against everything that would try to overcome you. Everything that would seek to overcome you. What is coming against your life that's contrary is against the kingdom of God. You must take your faith, take the promises of God and target them specifically and go at it. If it's drug addiction, if it's alcoholism, N not not very many of you here are going to be plagued with those. You've heard enough. You've been around enough, raised in church. Some, but not a lot. But there's others here that are driven with envy, and your big thing is materialism. I want to say this one again. We just dealt with a major situation in our city of a couple splitting up. We began to speak and <clears throat> preach and the Lord unveiled to the woman's heart. She shared with us the story how she pressed her husband. As I was teaching on being debt-free, she pressed her husband for years to always live in a house far beyond their ability to pay. It kept their marriage in constant financial upheaval, pressure constantly on them until put him in a situation, alienation came, other things entered in, and they're in a point of separation. She said, what started it was my own greed and envy, looking at other people. Now, this is not always the type of camp meeting thought there that everybody shouts about. There are other things we will, but this is one that when you're delivered from it, you will shout about it. Yeah. See, prosperity is not living in debt off the bank. A lot of people say, oh, praise the Lord, and they're praising the Lord for some big debt they got into. Some bondage that put them in. There's nothing wrong with, you know, borrowing temporary situations, but when people get in debt bondage, it can ruin their lives and put unnecessary pressure. <clears throat> Just a little word on this. Recently, we had, uh, we had a family reached in our church in our bus ministry, now working in our bus ministry. They have nine children. And they were living in a little uh, 
two-bedroom house, very poor family. But they begin to get a hold of the Word. Brother Calvin began to release his faith and got a good job, hard, steady worker, he and his wife both doing their best, and they just were able to get a home for $17,000, four-bedroom home with two baths. I was sharing this with the man in our church uh, uh, that's buying rent homes, and, and he said, hey, I bought several homes recently in Tulsa, in certain areas of our, of our city for six to $8,000. Now, it may not be that way in your communities, but in certain areas, what is the point? I don't want us to get sidetracked. The point is this. You can find a car, a house, clothes, everything that is in the bracket where you have money to pay for it. You say, well, it's not going to be where the Joneses live. Yeah. Yeah. But the Joneses could be sweating it out every day. <laughs> you know how wonderful to move in a realm of continual blessing of being able to pay and earn interest rather than pay interest. I've paid it and I've earned it and earning it's better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I just say, the Lord dealt with us years ago, and I know many of you here are in debt freedom, but he dealt with us many years ago to get out, <clears throat> to stay out as a church, and, and that's happened. And the things we've done, we've done on a debt-free basis. And we were just figuring up a few weeks ago because there was another deal. We had to buy land next to us, and we just had a short time frame to buy it. And we, they got to counting up. If we had bought the land we were in and the buildings we had built, and done it the conventional way, pay a little bit or as much as you could and then finance the rest of it and try to pay it off as quick as you could in the average way you would pay it off. We would have already spent in the last eight years over $8 million in interest alone. And we were all rejoicing because none of the land we've ever bought has ever had any interest on it, and the buildings were all built with cash and the land bought that way. And we're thanking God for that gift over these eight years. <clears throat> this may just be a little side thought, but we're in a time that you and I cannot base our lives upon the world's economy. We've got to be into God's system. And when we're hooked into God's system, that means operating on God's principles. Then the world system does not affect us in good season or bad. We're, we're moving in a realm with God. Another word here of overcoming that we need to do is not only in the drugs and alcohol, but also overcoming in the realm of fear. There are many people that would do great things for God if they weren't so afraid. Afraid of a new venture, afraid of moving to a new town. They talked about the Bible college. Many people would love to, but they're just afraid. Man, it's too far and snaky over there. How would I ever get the money? And so fear blocks many people. It's time to be an overcomer of everything that is opposing the will of God in your life. And fear is one of the greatest opponents of the blessings and the call of God upon your life. There are many who would serve the Lord on the mission field, but fear is standing there like a roadblock. We had a couple who built a beautiful sports complex, indoor batting cages and uh, for baseball and all types of other training equipment and games and built a huge uh, mini uh, golf course with, with all the spectacular things with it. And God began to work inside of their life. That he had a call upon them. And here was a rich young ruler where Jesus was speaking to him to follow me and to sell it all and the day came where Terry and Brenda Henshaw sold it all, got ready, went with us to Russia, and now they're the pastors of Victory Christian Center in St. Petersburg, Russia. Three children living in a fourth-story apartment, Russian-style, 
And uh, they're about ready to go with us right on into Eastern Europe as we go through those Eastern European countries. And they've sold it all and given it all up for God. Sometimes people just think that's something we read about in autobiographies of 100 years ago. Folks, it's happening right now when people get free of fear. Has God called you? Then do it. Whatever he's spoken, it's time that we step forward and deliver our lives totally to the Lord. Now, there's another powerful area that must be overcome, and it's going to hit in a lot of people this weekend, and that is bitterness toward your father. Bitterness toward fathers, an absentee father, a father that divorced your mother, a father that never loved, never showed emotional compassion or concern for your life, a father who used verbal abuse or perhaps fathers that used physical or sexual abuse against your life. To be an overcomer, and if you've already overcome it, we do not want to dig it up again. Never again. If you've overcome, it's forgiven and it's gone, it's over. Never replay that. Burn the video in your mind, it's over. But so many people have never dealt with it. They've, they've never resolved this issue on the inside of forgiving what happened and releasing it and letting go of it. And until that happens, then we're riding under the control of bitterness, under the control of unforgiveness. If you're here, if you're listening to us, wherever you may be watching, in Hawaii or whatever place of this country, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, Forgive and release it. I was preaching in prison a year ago. In fact, we were back there this last Saturday, a Bowley prison, and they had an outdoor meeting, and just the, the people were able to invite their families to come, which is a wonderful way to hold a prison crusade because you've got children, you've got mothers and wives that are there uh, that are that are all required, they have to sit there and listen to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, the great thing is they get to get out of prison for a little while to come for this crusade. So they, you know, a bunch of them want to come. But I was preaching and the Lord began to deal with me on the, the issue of forgiveness of fathers. Did you know that most of our men in prison, their problems started with a breakdown in a father-son relationship? Either a father who was never there or a father who did the things we talked about, either abused or never showed any affection. And as a result of that, things went wrong. The power of God is here to reveal to you you have a heavenly father that will meet far more than all your needs, that will enable you to never have to say, I didn't have a father. You can now say, I have the most wonderful father anybody could ever have. Hallelujah. Tonight is a night of revelation, of freedom, of overcoming things that are trying to bury us and keep us from entering the promised land, possessing all that God has for us. How do you do it? You say it. I forgive Dad, my Father. I release Him. I let go. Lord, I let go of it tonight. I release everything that happened, everything that didn't happen, regardless. And some of you, it may not be a father. While we're thinking about it that this time of the year, it may be another person. You see, one of the greatest traps of the enemy right now is the trap of bitterness and resentment. We're living in a society that is angry. What happened in Los Angeles only a few months ago was an igniting of anger in many different people. And it just sparked one after another. Even people today still angry over certain situations, things that were handled or not handled, all of that. Creating anger in many people. What's happening in Yugoslavia? Angerness, anger, bitterness. What's happening in Rwanda? We have tribal prejudice, anger that exploded into hatred and now genocide in a whole nation killing itself. One of the worst atrocities in all of our time is going on right now while we're sitting here. What's the cause of it? 
bitterness and resentment that was never resolved. Jesus came to strike an axe to the root of that bitterness. He showed us how to forgive when he was nailed and hung between heaven and earth and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Hear this. Not only did Jesus do that, but also Stephen did it while they stoned him. Same words, letting us know Christ inside of a human person can enable you to forgive anything that's happened in your life. If you're willing to let go, you can rise up. There's nothing that can hold you down if you believe in the power of God to forgive and to forget. You see, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. I will make a way in the wilderness. And I'll bring forth rivers in the desert. Your life may not have any way. You may feel like there's no future, there's no path. God says, I will make a way. You may feel like it's all barren and dry because of the terrible things that have happened in your life. God says, I'm going to make the desert blossom like a rose. Your life will become fruitful again. You don't have to live in despair and discouragement. I think of a single parent in our church, four children, two very small children. Husband did some terrible things and left the family. And here's an abandoned mother, four children, what's she going to do? Forced into a situation where she's depending upon the government for every type of support. People helping, church helping, standing with her, but from housing on down, she could become extremely bitter over things that have happened. But she decided to forgive, to release it. You know what happens when you forgive and you release it? Resurrection comes to your life. This young woman in her 30s said, I will arise, I will come back. She didn't have a degree. She didn't uh, have the ability to have the kind of job to support those children. But she determined, I'm going to get an education. And she just finished her first year at Oral Roberts University, made an A average, and has won a scholarship that will complete all her years through school. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may say, I've had a bum rap. I've had a bad deal. Quit calling for a pity party and start looking for the grace of God. You see, people are talking about being dysfunctional because this happened and that happened. We understand bad things happen, but we know God can turn bad things into good. He can turn your life. Joseph was almost killed by his brothers, and the only reason they didn't kill him is because they could make money off of him alive. And they sold him. How would you like to be sold as a slave by your family? We can't even fathom it in our, our minds. There's, there's no relationship to it right now where you live, although there are situations where people are being sold in the world. But in our culture right now, that's not happening. And, but think about it a moment. What would it be like? How would you feel about your brothers if they sold you into slavery and watched you being carried away and you're looking back, seeing your brothers and they're counting the money they received? How do we know Joseph forgave? You want to know how? When he got into Potiphar's house where he worked, the Bible says... The good hand of the Lord was upon him, and everything Joseph did prospered until Potiphar said, I'm putting you in charge of everything in my household. Listen, when you forgive, it doesn't matter if they sell you. God will raise you up. Hallelujah! 
You may be here saying, I should have gotten that promotion. I should have gotten that raise. I should have gotten this opportunity. Hey, forgive. They're not your source. Promotion doesn't come from the east to the west or the south. Promotion comes from the Lord. Is God your source or is it the company store? Who is it? This is an hour that we see God is our source. And you remember what happened. Potiphar's wife tempted him. She cast a lustful eye toward him, the scripture speaks of, and day after day tempted Joseph. And the Bible says he resisted, saying, you know, the master's put everything in my charge except for you. How, how could I do this? And he avoided her. Hear this. If you're going to overcome temptation, you need to avoid it. Amen. To run from it. Many people want to just see if they can overcome it. Get as close as they can. Are y'all out there? I do better with a little talking back, all right? And the best thing is just run. Hear this. If you're in an office and your boss or your secretary is making advances to you, leave that job. You see, the day came where she came upon Joseph, and he had to run. And remember, she pulled his coat off. Boy had a problem keeping coats, you know. Lost one in the pit, and lost one to Potiphar's wife. But he was doing his 440-yard dash, getting out of there. And that's what the New Testament says, run from evil. Get away from it. Avoid the very appearance of it. Just get out of it. We had a lady years ago and a, a man that came to us, and they're about ready to get a divorce. And she was telling us what a jerk this guy was that she was living with and running him down all his bad traits and faults and she didn't mention any of hers. And so we just thought maybe she might have one, and we uh, got talking to her and said, well, you know, what are you doing? And, you know, well, I'm at work. And I said, well, is there, is there anybody else you're interested in? She said, well, there's this, uh, there's this nice man that uh, I work for, and he's been real nice to me, said a lot of nice things. And the whole story began to come out. Here was seduction in process, a divorce about to take. How many of you realize this is what's happening in America? Yeah. It's a real story out there, so let's get, let's get to the bottom line here. And so she's going through it, being seduced, and, and I just said, do you want to go to hell? Yeah. Well... She didn't want to go to hell, but she wanted to go with this man. And what we helped her see is that the two go together. Man and hell. Well, she wasn't clapping that day. Because you see, when people get in a physical relationship, with a person in an immoral way, either before marriage or after marriage in an adulterous affair, it has a tremendous psychological and emotional pull. It's a spiritual thing. That's why Paul says that if you're joined to a harlot, you become one with them. So it was a part of her body being pulled. Well, the good news is she made the right decision and left the job. She and her husband, the original one, are still married and in the ministry today serving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a day and a time to overcome the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. You see, some t people will confess they're overcomers, but when it comes to where the rubber meets the road, where this traction takes place, where the battle is, then they excuse it and say, well, that's not really what it's talking about. 
That's really what it's talking about. That's right where it's at and what you're dealing with. And whether it's, uh, Sharon referred to it, pornography that many people are dealing with in this hour, whether it's through literature or it's through television, it's something that must be broken. And the good news is it can be. There's overcoming power in a relationship with Jesus Christ. When our eyes are set on Him and His Word, our eyes will have no joy and pleasure in unclean things. It'll reject it, reject it. You see, when you deal with the good stuff all the time, fellowship with the Lord, prayer, His Word, you don't want the bad stuff. It's not you're just trying to say no all the time. It's just that stuff doesn't have an entry. Are you all out there? This is the hour of decision in every area. You've got to leave the past behind. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. Paul says, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Reaching for those things that are before. How many of you are reaching for the prize of the high calling of God that's in Christ Jesus? I want you to know retirement is not the prize of the high calling. What is the prize of the high calling? It's the reward the Father gives to those who fully do His will. The high calling. See, some people may love the Lord, but they won't do His will in every area. The Lord has a perfect will for you to walk in. When you step into that, you're into your high calling. And some of you are about to be elevated tonight by a decision of your will to get into your high calling. In other words, what you're doing right now you know is not the will of God. But you've been doing it because maybe fear, some habit, some activity, some situation, family deal, you're living there. But you've sensed the upward call of God that is in Christ Jesus. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. Higher ground. God's calling us. What is that higher ground? It's the track that we're to run on, the upward call of God where Paul would say at the end of his life, I've run the race. I got on that track and I ran the course that God had for me. This is the hour to do it. You know, there are teenagers in this day and time that have stepped into the call of God that are pursuing the Lord with all their heart. Not every teenager is living for the devil. Hallelujah. There are... Young people that are selling out to God all the way. We're seeing it happen across our city as thousands of our teenagers in the city of Tulsa are selling out to serve the Lord and witnessing in their high schools. Revival is breaking out in our high schools across the city in the middle of tough times. That We're not saying the darkness is not there, but in the middle of it, young men and women are rising up with boldness to declare there is an answer and to go ahead and pray and hold their own Bible studies. Do you know there's no law against Bible studies and prayer meetings right now in the public schools before school or in a room that's given by a teacher? They have the same right as the French club or the Spanish club. It was one at the Supreme Court level. It's on the courts right now. And if your schools are not doing it, find a believer and start a Bible club in your high school, your junior high, your elementary schools. You can't force people to go to a club, but everybody that wants to come can come. And that's where it comes in. Freedom of choice, freedom of speech, that those believers have the same rights as anyone else. Now, when the spirit of strife gets inside of a person's life, they open the door for every type of evil. James 3 says where there's envy and strife, there's confusion and what? Every kind of evil work come in. Why do many people get hooked on alcohol? Is it because they like the junk? No. You want to know why? Because of strife. Because of bitterness. Every alcoholic I've dealt with, and we, Sharon and I preach in the government subsidized department communities every month. We've had almost 70 crusades once a month 
five and a half years or so, of going in there and preaching and speaking right where they are. Friday night, the Lord dealt with us. Going on Friday night, right when the drug deals are happening, right while all the bad stuff, and just pitch your tent and preach and turn up the loudspeakers, and if they don't come hear you, they'll be reverberating in their apartments. And so they can either hear us or feel us, whichever one they want. And so we go, and we work with many people that are there. Every alcoholic I've ever dealt with has roots of bitterness in their heart. Envy and strife come in. Did you know the same thing in prostitution? Young ladies that'll sell their bodies, you will find roots of bitterness, and most often it's directed toward their father. An absentee or an abusive or an immoral father that opened the door, that did what? Let the hedge down, and the child got the bitterness inside. Hear this. If we're going to overcome, if you're going to overcome a habit, you may have been up here trying to trim the leaves. It's time to lay the ax to the root. Lay the ax to the root. You say, I've got this habit, I can't overcome it. Yes, you can if you'll kill the roots. Deal with the root system. Get rid of envy. Get rid of bitterness. Get rid of strife. Get rid of backbiting. You say, but, you know, they're such rotten people. Well, they may be, but don't let it get inside of you. Make the decision, I will forgive, I will release them. Now, what happens when we make that decision? Romans 8, 11 says, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will quicken your mortal body. It'll make it alive. God's spirit dwelling on the inside of us. Micah 7, 8, Sharon sang it. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. Though I fall, I shall arise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. We make that decision that we're going to rise up. Why must you and I overcome? When I was a little boy, we went swimming in Corny Creek, just outside of our town. And I can still remember it's where I got under an inner tube, and I'm going down. It was deep enough for me to drown in. When we think of a creek, we think of a little shallow, but this had deep, deep parts of it. And my brother was strong enough to pull me out of the current and rescue me. I am alive today because I was rescued by an overcomer. Folks, there's someone out there still drowning that if you're not strong enough to pull them in, they will drown. They're drowning in their lust. They're drowning in their evil desires. They're drowning in their deception. We're to be overcomers, not just so we can sit on the bank and watch all those people out there and say, oh, isn't the world terrible? Look at them doing all their bad stuff. No, we've been saved for a purpose. You've been saved to deliver, saved to heal, saved to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the anointing is in you to do it. He's inside of you. That same spirit that was in Jesus that anointed him in Acts 10, 38, and he went about doing good, that is Acts 1, 8 for you. You will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come on you. How many of you had the Holy Ghost come on you? How many of you have the evidence of the Holy Ghost has come on you? You mean you're a witness everywhere you go? That's the evidence. The evidence is Acts 1.8. You will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you will be witnesses. Too many charismatics have made the evidence something they just, just do in church, the most evangelized acre in the world. But the true evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is you can't keep it inside these walls. You can't keep it in your heart. It's someone you must share. It's a life you have to tell everywhere you go, whether it's Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, or the uttermost parts of the earth. You have to tell somebody. Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe, maybe something is slacked off. It's time to get that fresh anointing from heaven. That wherever you go, the guy on the elevator, the people at the service station, where we go, Sharon and I, those folks get it all the time. You know, they're always getting witness to airplanes, 
makes no difference to us. Folks, what we do is not a professional paid job. We are witnesses, whether we get paid or not, or wherever we are. We're called to be his servants. He said, you are my witnesses. That's what we are. What am I? I am a born-again overcomer, more than a conqueror, and a witness of the Lord Jesus. When the Spirit begins to move inside of you, and that resurrection flows in you, you can walk as an overcomer because of the blood of the Lamb. Say it with me. The blood of the Lamb. Revelation 12, 11, they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Now, as you let the Spirit overflow your life, and you may be here and you grew up like I did. I, I was not raised around a bunch of rawdy Pentecostals like you. We were raised in a sophisticated main line, did not both share it in it. Her father's minister in a church where you sat, you didn't move, you didn't squirm, you didn't turn around and look behind you, and you sure didn't clap. <laughs> and no one dared raise their hands or you would be removed. How many of you have been in a place like that? First of the Frigidaire. Anyway, our background was that. I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. When some people said Holy Ghost, I had visions of Casper. I couldn't relate. There was no, what does that mean? And you may be here and you're in the same boat. You know, someone talked you into coming, dragged you here, hogtied you, whatever, and you're here. Hey, open your life up to the Holy Spirit. He's the one who gives you the power to live this overcoming life. As you put your faith in the blood of Jesus. Now, what's so powerful about the blood of Jesus? Your sins were forgiven by that blood. Not only were they forgiven, but Jesus said when he held that cup at the Last Supper, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant covenant given for the remission of your sins. That means your sins are wiped out. They are no more. They are remitted. What does that mean? There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. I don't have to look back because there's nothing to look back at. Y'all heard about the Sunday school teacher teaching and telling all the little children how Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt? Little Johnny waved his hand and said, that's nothing. My mama was driving through the parking lot and she looked back and turned into a telephone pole. <laughs> That's not my family. <laughs> when people look back, they never reach the destination. They always crash. Things go wrong, all right? What happens by the blood of the lamb? You don't have to look back anymore. You don't have to live in regret, remorse, fear over all that's happened. You can say, oh, glory to God, I have been redeemed. I've been bought. I'm forgiven. I'm a new creation. You say, are you sure with all the junk that I've done? Yes. Yes. Doesn't matter what you've done. And remember this. You may be here. Nothing outwardly was done wrong, but you know you've had sins in the heart and in the mind. The blood cleanse, cleanses there. We have to continually rely on that blood. Why? Because the accuser of the brethren is accusing day and night. What happens in an accusation? The devil says, look what you did. Look at your failure. You get to looking at it, and the more you look at it, you'll go back into it. And he takes a person who could be an overcomer back into the same bondage they were in, in before. But once you know your past is forgiven and it's behind you, you don't have to look back. You don't have to be reminded of it. You don't have to dwell on it. It's over with. Hallelujah. And then there's the power of the Word of God that's given to us. It is, say it with me, it is written. Now, you can know what's written, but if you don't say what's written, the enemy won't flee. Psalm 91, many people claim it about no evil will befall me, but it starts with, I will say the Lord is my refuge. I will say God is my fortress. Is he? If he is, then say it. It says, let the weak say I'm strong. Don't say you're weak, say I'm strong. 
Declare it. I am strong. I am blessed. I am redeemed. Everything my hand touches prospers. My children are taught of the Lord. Great is their peace. They are delivered from iniquity and uncleanness. How do you fight bad thoughts with your words? Remember this. Your mind cannot think a wrong thought if your mouth is speaking a right thought. This can save you thousands of dollars at the psychiatrist right here. People say, I can't get these crazy thoughts out of my mind. How do I get rid of them? Start taking God's Word, the same thing Jesus had to use. You see, Jesus, and I'm preaching Jesus to you. Man, what, what is this guy? I'm a Jesus preacher. What message do y'all preach? Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus in the night. Jesus left us an example we could follow. He left us a pattern. In other words, he took everything that we would have to live with victoriously as an overcomer, and that's what he lived with for the 33 years that he was here. All the things. He took the shield of faith. You've got faith. He took the sword of the Spirit. You've got the sword of the Spirit. He was born of the Spirit. You're born of the Spirit. He was anointed by the Spirit. You're anointed by the Spirit. He had the life of God. You have the life of God. Hallelujah. He had the heavenly Father supporting him. You have the heavenly Father. He had the angels supporting him. You have the angels supporting you. How many of you have seen it? All right. He's our example. So we trust in him. We love him. We focus our hearts on him. How important in this hour that you love Jesus more than anything else. I love Sharon. You know, I had a vision of us being together married before I ever had a date with her. It was right after I got saved and God opened my eyes. We'd been in the same youth group for a year and I'd never thought about it. You know, we're just friends. But then God opened my eyes and we have four beautiful children. Two of them are teenagers. Praise the Lord. They're on fire for God, raising their money this summer. Both of them going on mission trips to share, share the Lord. And they've been going since they were little kids on their own to the mission field to witness and that's the power, just share this with you, the power of a Christian school, an on-fire youth group, and nightly devotions with your kids. Amen. Praying and reading the Bible every night, even while they're teenagers. We're still doing it, and they love it. They want to pray. They want to share. Oh, thank God for the joy of a family that loves the Lord. The greatest pain can be in your home as well as the greatest blessing can be there. This is an hour for us to hear the word of the Lord, that we take this word, this anointing, this message that we've been given, and we start speaking it aloud. We start saying what God says. If God says, I'm healed, then I say, I am healed. If I am, says I am, then I am. If I am, says I am, then I am. If I am, says I am, then I am what I am. <laughs> if the Lord says I am righteous, then I am. If the Lord says I am healed, then I am. If the Lord says I am more than a conqueror in this world, if the Lord says I am, then I then I am. Whatever he says, then that's what we say. So in, in this week, and when you get home, you're good getting in the car. Someone says, well, how are you doing? Oh, I'm blessed. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm redeemed from the curse. I'm delivered. I'm overflowing with joy. Some of you call your relatives and you ask them that one question. You're 30 minutes before you ever get in another word. How are you? you, you, you many of you have learned you just don't ask it of, of mama or grandma anymore. You just... You already know before you call. Hey, you get grandma on the word of God and you can change her life in the last days. Speaking the word of the Lord. How important is it that we would be overcomers? In the fall of 92, right before we went on the 18 months of preaching in Russia, right after we had been with Dr. Sumrall in August and September, Going on the outreach that fall, I guess it had been of 91 or so. 
At 2 in the morning, about 2.30, we were sleeping in our house, and I began to hear a little buzzing sound. Beep, 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 beep. I thought it was my daughter's alarm clock. Ruthie is such a sound sleeper that her alarm would go off, and she'd sleep right through it. And I'm thinking, Ruthie, get up and punch your alarm off. It's time to get up. And But she didn't, and I thought, well, I'm going to go cut it off and I opened my eyes and I looked into the hallway of our house and smoke was already down to right here. Our house was on fire and had been for some time. And the fire, our house was in an L shape and the whole other end of the L was just blazing and the smoke had come down and was right at the top of our beds. And I ran into the hall, Sharon and I, there's a fire, get out, get out! And our four children our oldest girl, Sarah, who's uh, 15 now, she had a room back on the far end of that L where the fire was. That particular night, I had strained my back picking up something, and I had just felt to go in. We had a little guest room that had a real hard bed. And I'd felt to go in there, and for some reason, after I went in, Sarah said, Mom, could I come in and just sleep with you? This is back that time. And so that night, all of our kids were at the right end of the house, praise God. And I didn't know where the fire was and didn't know if we could get out, but I started toward the door to see if I could get a way out while Sharon was grabbing all the kids, getting them up, waking them up, of course, in the middle of the night. And the moment we stood up, we were in just completely black smoke. There was a double roof. They had a shake uh, or a uh, shingled roof. They had put over a wooden roof, and they had not removed the wooden shingles. We didn't know that, but anyway, it trapped all the smoke. The wooden shingles burned, but the composition roof trapped in everything. So all of that black oil smoke is in the house. <clears throat> the firemen said it was the worst case scenario of a fire smoke damage they had seen. And so finally I got the door open. The blaze was right on the opposite side of the wall where the latch was, right at the corner where the door was, and got it out and heard the kids coming. And so I threw the door open. There was a glass door and a wooden door, and they opened. And I held it, but I couldn't see, and I felt them all go by until the last one went by, and then ran out in the front yard trying to hold our breath during that whole time. And we were looking around, and. Sharon and I began to say, where's Ruthie? Where's Ruthie? And Sharon said, she's still in there. And so in a fire, there's a terrific backdraft where oxygen is sucked in from the outside to feed the fire. So if you try to open a door, there's a horrible, powerful suction. But miraculously, we got the door open and I started back down the hallway and now the, the smoke's a little lower. And I walked down the hallway just waving my arms and my hand hit her on the head. She had been dazed when she woke up and started out but didn't know where to go. The wonderful thing is that she stopped before she went straight on down the hallway into the fire. And she just stood there. So I grabbed her by the hair and <laughs> pulled Ruthie out. She's 13 and got her outside and we're going out in the front yard and I said, where's Paul? This is our littlest one, six years old. Where's Paul? Where's Paul? And Sarah said, Ma, Sharon said, She's, he's still in there. And our littlest boy, the fourth one, was still inside. <clears throat> the flame that was there, the heat had burned my lungs and scorched my face. My ears ended up like pork rinds and uh, my eyes had been burned. I was blinded for about three days after that. And in that moment, I can still remember about 10 feet from the door, my body did not want to go in. I had inhaled that smoke that was uh, just searing hot and my body was in such pain. But you know, when it's your child, it was only a passing thought. 
as we went, I went back in and started down the same hallway, waving my hands from side to side, trying to find him. And my hand hit his little head. And Paul had gotten down on his knees when it was, he was the only smart one in the bunch. <laughs> but he didn't know where we were, and he stood up when I walked in. And, of course, I grabbed him by the pajamas, and he got raptured. <laughs> Outside. Hear this. Jesus overcame and went into the fire for us. He has scars that testify that he came in to save us, that we might be delivered from the eternal flame. Let's stand together. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I ask that you would be bowed in prayer right now with no one moving, just in a moment of respect and reverence for the Holy Spirit's moving in our lives. Every one of you that are here that would say, Pastor, there are things in my life that are not right with God that I must overcome. And I believe Jesus has sent his message tonight to reach in and grab me out of something that's trying to destroy my life. Doesn't matter what it is, inside or out. This is a freedom camp meeting and it's time to be free. Attitudes, habits, lifestyles, hidden things. Maybe something that's trying to take you out. Maybe it's grief, bitterness, or sorrow. Depression or discouragement. Maybe nothing you've done wrong, but something that's tried to come on you, an oppression of the enemy, and it's trying to destroy your life. Little Paul had done nothing wrong, but there was a fire trying to take his life. And maybe that's you. I want to pray for you. If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, no one will ever love you more than he did. He loves you. He gave himself for you. Maybe you're the prodigal son or daughter tonight. You know all about what we're talking of, but you're not living it. You realize you're in the pig pen of your own selfishness. You say, I want to go home. Good news. The Father's arms are open wide. All you have to do is to arise and start toward home. Every one of you that I'm speaking to, you say, there's something I need help in. I need the ability to overcome. Pray for me. Or I'm here. I need a new start. I need to get things right with God. Pray for me also. Or perhaps you're here and you say, I've never received that infilling of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Spirit of God to be a bold witness. I need that. Pray for me too. Right where you are. Everyone that I'm speaking to would say, pray for me. You see, if you're willing to receive this prayer and open your heart, God can do something. But if you simply sit and say, well, yeah, I, I agree with it, but there's no response, then nothing can happen. Faith has to be mixed. That's why the Word says, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And if you have faith in the Word of God, that you can be an overcomer, and that if we ask anything in Jesus' name, it will be done. If you'll put your faith in that word tonight, you can overcome and walk out of here victorious. Everyone that I'm speaking to that is ready to be an overcomer, ready to walk into victory in an area of your life that's been a struggle, I'm going to ask you just to slip your hand in, in the air as an indication, this is my night. Lift your hands up high all over the building, all over the building. Hallelujah. Many, many, many hands. You're watching us by television. There's a number on your screen that you can call for prayer. Let them know what that need is right now. As we're praying here, and many people are lifting their hands right where you are watching. Now, go to your phone. Call the prayer partner. Let them know, this is my need. Pray for me. Agree with me. I'm going to pray for you here as we pray for all of these. This is an hour of deliverance. This congregation... It's far larger than those that are just in this room tonight. Across this nation, those watching by satellite, the power of God is coming upon you right now. His anointing is here. His anointing is there. Every one of you lifting your hands that are serious about walking free, I'm asking you just to take a step into the aisle and come 
as an indication I am declaring my freedom. This is emancipation proclamation, and I'm accepting it. I am declaring the devil has no authority over my life. You come quickly. Family members and friends, you can come and stand with them. Counselors, come and stand right beside them. This is a night of freedom from drugs, from alcohol, from fear, from depression, from pornography, from the lust of the flesh, from adultery and fornication, from sinful thoughts and habits. This is a night to be cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, filled with the Holy Spirit. Take up the Word of God. This is a night of freedom in your life. That's it. You're not coming to me. You're coming to Jesus. That's it. Everyone just take a step forward up close as you can and make room. Ushers and you can usher the others around to the side. others here you need this prayer for the healing of sickness or disease mental or emotional difficulties you're going through you come this is an overcomers night to walk in freedom breaking the chains tonight breaking the chains that's it you continue to come together redeem redeem that means you've been bought thank god for his mercy tonight is your night tonight is your night to be free tonight is your night to become an overcomer and stay an overcomer the word of god works the blood of jesus is upon your life call the prayer line our prayer counselors want to pray with you and minister to you we thank God for the message that pastor Billy Joe and Sharon Doherty have brought to us this night and we choose to be overcomers yes you can be free you can be an overcomer God has destined you to walk in victory you can have peace of mind you can be free from bondage and addiction because God loves you he paid a tremendous price for you to be free don't let this opportunity pass you by. Call the number on the screen. Call. Get up right now and call. Tonight is the night your life changes. Tonight is the night you advance forward in the kingdom of God, never again to be held back, never again to be pushed down and ruled over, but it's time for Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, to live big within you. You are an overcomer. God has ordained it to be so. I agree with what the Word of God says about your life. You're a new creature, and you will serve no one but the living God. Call the prayer line now. We would love to hear from you. We know you're watching. This has been a time ordained by the Spirit of God just for your life, just for your life, to rise up and a new and a fresh start. You cannot go forward looking back. Let the, let the past die behind you, and let's look to the cross. Let's look to the Savior who will change your life forever. Oh, what a wonderful opportunity for your life today to be free because of what Jesus has done for you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It matters what Jesus has done for you. The blood of Jesus is crying out for your innocence and your deliverance right now, and you can receive it freely. I command you now to rise up in Jesus' name and receive redemption. Receive God's forgiveness and His love for you. Your life changes tonight. Your life changes tonight. I can guarantee it because Jesus said it would be so. Call us. We'd love to hear from you. Let's go back and see Billy Joe.
that's it. You declare it. Sin will not have dominion over me. Darkness will not rule in my life. Bitterness will not rule. Those of you that have had the offense against a father or a family member, God's given you the power to forgive. Just to whisper their name out. Lord, I forgive. No longer Call their name. If it's your father, say, I forgive my dad, my father. If it's a family member, I release it. It's let go. There it is. In the name of Jesus, the anointing of God goes into you now. Take it. That's God's anointing. Breaking that thing out of your life. All across this room. In Jesus', In Jesus name. That's it. There's a vision of freedom. Pornography will hold your life no longer. Wrong desires. Their power is broken. You know the truth now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In, Jesus name. Oh, my In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Now pray with me out loud. Lord Jesus, I surrender. I believe in you with all my heart that you died for my sins. I believe you were raised from the dead. I confess you as my Lord. Fill me with your spirit. I trust in your blood. And I take your word. I am redeemed. I am your property. The devil has no right to my life. Sin has no dominion over me. I am more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. My testimony is I'm redeemed. I am God's child. The truth has set me free. There's no condemnation anymore. I accept God's love for me. And I resist the devil. He flees from me. In the name of Jesus. That's it. You just begin to release that prayer language all over the building. All of you back, begin to stir up the Spirit of God. You that are watching by television, go to your phone. Let our prayer partners know right now you have prayed this prayer. You're watching and you're receiving deliverance and freedom. You're praying for freedom in your home, freedom from drugs or alcohol, freedom from fear or oppression, freedom from bitterness. The chains are breaking in South Bend. But they're breaking right where you are. Whether it's Denver or Tulsa or Hawaii or Wisconsin, wherever it is you're watching, the Spirit of God is moving. Right now, I pray for you. I pray the power of God will flood your life. The Lord will fill you and anoint you in the name of Jesus. Chains of bondage be broken. Rise up. Rise up to a new life. Rise up to live free in Jesus. Rise up and walk in the liberty. Hallelujah. That's it. Now release the language of the Spirit right where you are, all over the building. The power of God's on you. Take it. Take His anointing. There's power to live this life. Not by our might or power, but by His Spirit. He's here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The joy has come. Glory. The joy has come.
With no response, nothing can happen. You heard it from Billy Joe Doherty tonight. The time is now. Now is the time to respond. As Billy Joe mentioned, the ministry, the anointing is happening here in South Bend, Indiana. But you can respond wherever you happen to be. If you're watching Satellite or any of the other stations around the country, that number is on the screen. Prayer line counselors are there to help you. They're there to help pray with you and pray for you and to get those needs met in your life. 1-800-365-3732. Billy Joe said there's a fresh anointing from heaven coming down tonight. We sense that. We trust you can, too. And we trust also that you do respond tonight by calling 1-800-365-3732. Uh, Billy Joe, by the way, will be here at Christian Center Cathedral of Praise during Camp Meeting 94 again on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., he and Sharon, his wife, will be ministering at that time. If you have the, the opportunity, you might want to avail yourself of it and be here in South Bend, Indiana for camp meeting on Wednesday morning. Of course, later on, it'll be John Hagee tomorrow night, and we'll tell you more about our schedule in just a little bit. Again, we do want to encourage you, though, to call right now and to talk to the prayer line counselors. If you would like tonight's message on all 